Welcome back to Floor and Ceiling, where today we will be undergoing our own mock draft, starting from the first pick all the way to the 15th pick. Now, just a disclaimer, the way that this video is set up is not indicative of my big board, meaning my own personal rankings. Of course, I do take that into account at times, but I am looking at team need and team history. So for example, the way that that works is that you'll see guys who I don't think are top 10 material being featured in the top 10, Whereas, the same applies vice versa. I might think that someone is worth a lottery pick, and they might not be in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. With the first pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select Cade Cunningham. Let's start with Cade Cunningham, who evidently has a highly enticing package worthy of being the top pick in 2021. At Oklahoma State, Cunningham was one of the premier scorers in college basketball. He was efficient from around the floor in an overwhelming role, helping propel his team to some impressive wins. The upside with Cunningham is that of a jumbo point guard or playmaker, even if it comes from a wing position who can also score at a great clip. At 6'8", Cunningham can easily see over defenses. He is an effective facilitator in transition and, theoretically, the half court. However, Cunningham will need to tighten some of his reads and cut down on avoidable turnovers. For Detroit, they have few long-term pieces going forward with just Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bey, and maybe Isaiah Stewart. You go best player available, and right now, Cunningham makes a convincing case for that. With the second pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Houston Rockets select Jalen Green. The Rockets are in a great spot. Even if they cannot draft Cunningham, they have at least two or three other incredible prospects. To me, this number two pick will come down to Jalen Green and Evan Mobley. Ultimately, the Rockets have Christian Wood and KJ Martin, who I'm guessing at least one will stay in the long term. The value of scoring is at an all-time high in the NBA, and should Houston go with Green, he will combine with Kevin Porter Jr. to form a fearsome guard duo. Green is an advanced shooter who can easily create space off the dribble. He answered questions about his efficiency during his season with the G League Ignite, and for now, silenced any doubts about his three-pointer. On top of that, I think Green is underrated in terms of playmaking and defense. He is mostly utilized as a score for a player, but he can execute some good reads. And as for his defense, he competes, and he's now shown in FIBA play and G League play that he can put a shift in. With the third pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Evan Mobley. Since Houston went with Jalen Green, the Cavs go with Evan Mobley. I'm sure they would be pleased with either one. But as for Mobley, this fit in Cleveland is pretty good, especially if the Cavs trade Jared Allen at some point. I think Mobley's future and best chance of fulfilling his potential is at the 5, but there is always the possibility that he might have to play at the 4. Simply, that comes down to him also having those tools or in the possibility that there is a front court jam. Mobley is a fearsome interior presence who can both score and really play make out of the post. He has soft touch on his hook shots and has shown the ability to make floaters and short jumpers. Mobley's 3-pointer will need to improve, but there's enough there to be optimistic about it. For now, he can offset that weakness with his brilliant passing. On the defensive end of the floor, Mobley is an elite rim protector with fantastic feel for the game on this end. He will need to get stronger, but I expect Mobley to be switchable, playable in a variety of systems, and very sturdy at the rim. With the 4th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Toronto Raptors select Jalen Suggs. Much like Cleveland, Toronto is in a great spot. I actually think they would love to draft Evan Mobley, but I'm not sure the chance will be there. Instead, Jalen Suggs is another fantastic prospect who will fit in seamlessly in the 6. Suggs is a transition dynamo. He is one of the best athletes in the draft, but in addition to that, he knows how to leverage that athleticism. He gets downhill, even though he will need to get more nuanced, he runs the floor hard, and he defends at a really high level. Suggs is incredibly hard to beat off the dribble, and he was highly active in the passing lanes. In the future, I think he will be one of the best guard defenders in the league, with his instincts, size, anticipation, and Toronto's track record of developing defenders. 
on the other end of the floor, Suggs still has to improve offensively. His three-pointer in particular is a point of focus, but for the most part, I think that is down to percentages. Suggs has solid mechanics, and he's even flashed some scoring off the dribble, when combined with all of his other tools that is tasty to think about. With the 5th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Jonathan Kaminga. I believe that this pick will ultimately probably come down to Jonathan Kaminga and Scotty Barnes. They are not the same type of player, but they are the same type of athlete that general manager John Hammond likes. By that, I mean athletic, powerful, and long. At the end of the day, I think Kaminga might just about quote-unquote beat Barnes to this pick. It helps that he has been in Orlando a lot recently, but he also fits what the Magic need. Right now, Orlando needs to address its poor wing depth. They have plenty of guards, but few bigger players really worth investing in. With Kaminga, he has already shown that he can score in a professional league. He is absolutely ready from an athletic and body perspective, with a powerful and quick frame that is at its best in transition. However, Kaminga still has to answer questions about his efficiency and feel for the game. He shot just 25% from 3 and was too erratic with the ball. But if Kaminga is developed right, he could turn into the type of slashing wing scorer that can pick up some of the best forwards in the league on defense. With the 6th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes is one of the most tantalizing but risky prospects in the draft in my opinion. He is such an unorthodox player that oozes two-way feel for the game, but at the same time, it is tough to imagine him not being limited offensively in the NBA. Barnes mostly played the one for Florida State, especially in the open court, but I'm not sure the handle and the athleticism are good enough to play there in the NBA. He's had some great defensive moments, but I am also not sure that he can be considered a small ball 5. In the end, Barnes might be a mismatchy 3 or 4, somewhat like Kyle Anderson. My main concern with Barnes is that he just has a really tough time scoring in the half court. He got the ball in almost lucky situations at Florida State, I suppose, and made plenty of easy shots. Off the dribble and from the three-point line though, he showed little to nothing. As we've seen recently, the most valuable players in the league can create for themselves, and Barnes right now is not even close to being there. With the 7th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select James Booknight. This is one of those cases where I think the fit and the rumors matter more than my personal ranking on James Booknight. This is higher than where I would pick him by a significant margin, but the buzz is that he has been highly impressive in his workouts before the draft. Booknight can play on and off the ball. He is a really smart cutter and playmaker away from the rock, which would fit the Warriors to a T. There have also been some flashes of him potentially being a 3-level scorer, somewhat like a Devin Booker type, but his efficiency really has to improve. Booknight made just 29% of his triples this year, and right now, his mid-range game is not efficient yet. But with the Warriors in win-now mode, adding someone at number 7 who can score the ball when it matters, provide good size and athleticism, and who also makes sense from an on-the-court standpoint, Booknight would be a very understandable pick. With the 8th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Jalen Johnson. After picking Jonathan Kaminga earlier, the Magic double up with Jalen Johnson. Again, this goes back to their lack of depth in the bigger positions. Johnson is a freight train playmaker. At 6'9", he is incredibly dynamic and creative in transition. He is capable of comfortably handling the ball in the open court and has shown flashes of toughness, even though he really does have to get stronger. The main question with Johnson is what type of role he plays exactly in the NBA. Is he a 4? Is he a 5? Is he someone who really needs a lot of touches? Lucky for him, the Magic have experience with the likes of Aaron Gordon in developing ball handling forwards who can really pass the ball, and theoretically slide up and down positions on both ends. Johnson still has to tighten his handle, cut down the wild mistakes, get more accurate with his passing, and become a much more comfortable shooter. But if he pans out, then he is an athletic and mobile big who has shown inconsistent upside on D, both near the rim and on the perimeter, he can create mismatches in transition, he can make open threes, and he can really pass the ball. 
With the ninth pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Sacramento Kings select Franz Wagner. The Kings are in a little bit of a weird limbo right now. They've got some good to very good pieces with the likes of De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, Rashawn Holmes, so on and so forth. But you also do not see them being truly competitive in the near future. The one thing that stands out to me is that the Kings don't have any long-term pieces on the wing. In my opinion, that sort of cleans things up to the likes of Moses Moody, Franz Wagner, or Keon Johnson. Ultimately for Sacramento, I went with Wagner. The German forward can provide instant value on defense, and then on the other end, his playmaking, unselfish nature, and underrated athleticism can open up Fox and Heald's scoring even more. With Wagner, the Kings are getting a do-it-all forward who is really intriguing going down both ends of the court. On attack, he can pass, cut, and has shown enough shooting despite the rocky percentages. That includes some off-the-dribble flashes. And on defense, Wagner will be able to guard multiple positions, slide up and down the floor given his excellent lateral quickness, and he is already a very good off-ball defender. With the 10th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Moses Moody. The Pelicans might only have Zion Williamson as a long-term piece, although Brandon Ingram is right behind him and Lonzo Ball could potentially be. We aren't quite sure yet how the Pelicans might play or look next season, given that they don't have a coach officially at the time of this video. But assuming that Williamson and Ingram are there in a few months, then Moses Moody makes a lot of sense with the 10th pick. Both Williamson and Ingram are at their best getting touches on the ball and trying to score or create. So even though they play the 3 and the 4, it is the other players around them who need to be ready to receive less touches and just spot up on the perimeter. Moody is someone who I believe will turn out to be an excellent shooter. He was a legit floor spacer for Arkansas with a low volume of touches and then played tough defense on the other side of the basketball. Moody can switch, take bumps, and use his long arms to bother people. And let's also not forget his impressive rebounding. We are looking at a Josh Hart or Mikael Bridges type of player, although his self-creation is very scarce right now. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Alperin Sengun. The entire future of the Charlotte Hornets franchise right now is built around LaMelo Ball. Going forward, that is the only player who truly matters in the long term as a centerpiece of that team. But for now, Charlotte could really bolster its front court depth. To me, they have to pick a center, so that narrows things down to the likes of Isaiah Jackson, Kai Jones, and Alpadin Shangun. Shangun's stock has really risen massively as of late, so I would not be surprised if he was chosen even at 11. The Turkish big man was a revelation ahead of the 2021 NBA Draft. He was an incredible scorer and rebounder this past season in Turkey. At just 18 years old, he was one of the most impactful players in his country, and that has to count for something. However, I personally still question how Shengun's post-heavy and paint-based scoring will translate. He's a little undersized and not that athletic, although he does do decent work in the pick and roll. Teams will look for Shengun to make up for some of his weaknesses with his passing. He is capable of making some unexpectedly creative reads and make life easier for his team. On defense, I think that the situation is worrying. Shengun is sort of caught between the 4 and the 5, and even though he is an okay vertical athlete, he will have to answer questions about whether he can keep up laterally. With the 12th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Kai Jones. To me, it is clear that the Spurs need a big. They have Jakob Pertl, who is a good defender and definitely poses a challenge on the inside, but he is more of a high ceiling type of player. Kai Jones out of the University of Texas has worked out for the Spurs in the pre-draft process, and hopefully he will have convinced the San Antonio decision makers. Jones is a fun fit on any team, but especially those with a strong development track record like the Spurs. He is the most malleable and elastic prospect in this year's draft. At 6'11", Jones runs the floor like a gazelle, switches directions on a whim, and can squeeze himself into the tightest of spaces with sidesteps, euro steps, and then, unexpectedly, rise up for a dunk. On offense, Jones can easily play above the rim, but he has also shown some ball handling in the open court and even a little bit of off-the-dribble shooting. Defensively, Jones is still green, but he has that type of switchable upside while still being able to patrol the rim. For example, he did an excellent job on Cade Cunningham in all of their games this season. 
Jones is risky because he is incredibly raw, but the mix of tools that project two-way potential are really worth looking at. With the 13th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Indiana Pacers select Josh Giddy. The Pacers are another team in sort of an awkward purgatory. Most of their players are at least decent, but not good enough to contend for anything real. After two years of dysfunction at the organizational level, I think the Pacers just need to go best player available, and ultimately, I went with Giddy at the 13th pick. The Australian prodigy adds great playmaking at 6'7", and just has outstanding feel for the game. Giddy was highly impressive in his first and only NBL season. He was among the best creators in the Australian league, but also showed that he had a well-rounded game with back-to-back -back triple doubles, for example. Right off the bat in the NBA, Giddy should be able to make a difference with his smart passing. He can make reads that pop off the screen or simply make the right play and connect things and keep them moving. The biggest questions about Giddy for me are his scoring and athleticism. He is a shot creator right now, but he cannot create for himself. He is not a reliable 3-point shooter yet, just 29% from there, and needs to improve off the dribble. In terms of athleticism, the main thing I'm looking for is the strength. Vertically, he is not outstanding, but he can get up for a dunk or finish a drive when he builds a head of steam. But how will his narrow frame and subpar athleticism match up in the NBA? That is the question to watch out for. With the 14th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select Davion Mitchell. This goes back to the Warriors being in win-now mode. I think that they will be very active seeking out trades, so this pick might eventually go to someone else. But if Golden State keeps it, then Davion Mitchell is definitely a winning player. He really improved his outside shooting in his last season at Baylor, all the while being one of the best defenders in the country. Mitchell is more of a score-first guard than a point guard, but Golden State already has plenty of playmakers. Mitchell can play both on and off the ball, come off the bench, and will definitely play with great efforts on both ends of the basketball. Mitchell is undersized, so we will have to see how his game looks on both ends of the floor at a higher level, but his package of shooting, athleticism in open spaces, and reliable defense are worth betting on. With the 15th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Washington Wizards select Isaiah Jackson. This is one of those picks that makes too much sense for me. The Wizards need a big and Isaiah Jackson would fit in like a glove. Russell Westbrook loves to play with bigs that can be effective above the rim, such as Daniel Gafford right now, and Jackson can definitely elevate for some big dunks. The Kentucky Big is also an awesome rebounder with great instincts for the ball and underrated toughness despite his skinny frame. However, Jackson is not a limited big, so don't think of him like that. He can take people on out of face-ups, and I think he's shown some decent shooting flashes close to the basket. On defense, Jackson can really protect the rim, being one of the most fearsome shot blockers in his conference. And away from the paint, I think that Jackson should have the mobility to switch out on the perimeter. He will need to rein in his instincts at times, though. Jackson can go hunting for blocks and take himself out of the game through avoidable fouls. He will need to become more patient and composed, which might take a short while. Alright, I think this video has gone on long enough, so I don't necessarily need a takeaway. What I am most interested in hearing right now is you guys' thoughts on this. Do you think my selections make sense? Do you wish your teams picked someone else? Let me know in the comments, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you enjoyed the channel, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.